Hi, it's good to be back. Um, it was very hard to leave the Bay Area and my favorite station, sorry, a plug here, KTVU. Um, but I, I, miss, I miss you all a lot. All of the reporters, producers, everybody that's in the business here, you're all wonderful. Um, I just wanted to tell a quick story. I know that tonight is going long, but it always does, so we're used to it. Uh, Rita called me in the middle of me leaving the Middle East trying to move and in the middle of 24-hour breaking news. And you guys have watched CNN, right? So you know what that looks like. Um, she asked me if I could do this, and I initially said, I, I can't. I'm so scared that I'm going to be called off and you'll be stuck there with nobody to speak for you. And she said, okay. Two days later, she wrote me a nice email saying, I'd love to see you. If you can make it, there's still a slot. I was planning on writing her back, but I forgot because I was exhausted. A week later, Rita wrote again, and I finally went, damn it, she still got it. She can convince anyone, anywhere, anytime, and that's how she used to beat us getting exclusives as well. So Rita Williams has still got it, y'all. Um, Rita is an incredible person. She is not only what you, would, you will hear in her video, a, a pit bull with a heart, but she has been an amazing mentor and friend, and the real reason that I am here is because she treated me better than just about anyone else in this business. While she was busting her butt, getting great interviews and doing great stories, she was also a mentor to a lot of us. She made sure we went to the doctor when we were supposed to. She made sure that we called our mothers. Uh, she made sure that we had a little bit of balance, and it's really hard to do that in this business, as you all know, having that balance, and Rita has been able to do that masterfully. She's taught us a lot of things about what it is to be a good journalist, not just a female journalist, but a damn good journalist, and I want to thank her for that. So, I wanted to leave you with a little bit of a depressing number, but we're used to it because we're all in news. Uh, I was looking up our life expectancy, because as one does on the weekends. And um, it's now at 78.5 years. I multiplied that to give us the number of days that we have in our life if we live the average lifespan. It's about 28,000 days. That's all we got. That's it. And Rita has lived every single one of those days with grace, and that is a life well lived. So everybody, let's give a big round of applause to Rita Williams, her fantastic 41-year career in television. And now, a look back at her history in TV. Uh, my name is Mike Hennessy. I'm the sheriff for the city and county of San Francisco. I think Rita Williams is an outstanding reporter, a real uh, gem. I think of Rita Williams as a pit bull with a heart. She's very tenacious, but nevertheless, she has compassion. Watch the original 10 o'clock news. Rita Williams is known as the queen of exclusives, breaking stories that left newspapers chasing TV. Are you the Zodiac Killer? No, I'm certainly, most certainly not the Zodiac Killer. He's been in custody now for four months in the Los Angeles County Jail, where I interviewed him last week. You didn't think you'd be convicted of anything? No, ma'am. Rita was born in Louisiana, brought up in Lubbock, Texas. Her parents instilled in her their Depression-era ethics to work hard and get as much education as you can. She did, first in her family to graduate from college. She was secretary of the student body at Texas Tech and an editor of the newspaper. When she graduated in 1969, she interviewed for her dream job to be a reporter for the Associated Press. The recruiter said Rita was by far the most qualified, but he couldn't hire her. She was too attractive, he said, and experience had shown that the pretty ones get married, have babies, and quit working. So she went to Washington, D.C., worked on Capitol Hill for her powerful hometown congressman, went to graduate school at night, and got her master's degree. George H.W. Bush, between jobs and not yet president, frequented the congressman's office, told Rita she was the same age as his son, George W., and would be a good influence on him. Would she go out with him? Rita said no, she was too busy, and instead lost her heart to a handsome young Navy lieutenant just back from Vietnam. 
Rita turned down a job as a Washington correspondent for a Houston newspaper after she was selected as a management trainee for Westinghouse Broadcasting. Well, that led to a year in Baltimore and the start of her TV career. Good morning. I'm Rita Williams. The enthusiasm of the fans and the players is certainly contagious out here. This is Rita Williams, ready for opening day, Memorial Stadium. On the first floor of this building is the Baltimore County Executive's Office, an office that most Marylanders distrust. The survivors must go on living, and friends and neighbors in this Northeast Baltimore community are helping the Terrys do just that. This is Rita Williams, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. Next came three years in San Antonio. Ken has been through a lot in the last year, escaping with only part of his family from Vietnam. Rita Williams for ABC News in San Antonio. But they'll have little to say in the matter if the U.S. Senate passes the Voting Rights Act. Rita Williams, Channel 12, Newswatch. Rita Williams, Channel 12, Newswatch. Then, in 1978, San Francisco, first as a reporter at KQED. It's an eerie feeling here at City Hall tonight where Mayor George Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk were shot and killed earlier today. The building is almost empty now. Police are guarding the supervisor's offices, and the office here where Harvey Milk was murdered this morning has now been sealed off. We'll be reporting on these terrible tragedies tonight on A Closer Look. And from 1980 until just last year at KTVU, where she continued to break barriers for women. The first to set up an office in the then newspaper only press room in the San Francisco Hall of Justice. We came over here to this room and it was completely empty. There was desk here, all this space, and that's when they said, You and that TV broad, get the hell out of here. She was a media witness for the last gas chamber execution in California, and her efforts to set up a TV radio media room in the San Francisco Federal Building continue to help reporters who follow. We could go on and on, but we'll end with what Rita always says was her greatest accomplishment. There's a new addition to the 10 o'clock news family. Our reporter Rita Williams gave birth to her very first baby just before midnight last night. It's a boy, a very big boy, 21 inches long and eight and a half, eight pounds, 11 and a half ounces. So far, Rita and her husband Lindsay haven't picked a name for the baby, but at eight pounds, 11 and a half ounces, we suggest Bubba. So for 35 years, the Bay Area was lucky enough to know my mom is a great journalist. But for 27 years, I've known her as a great mom. And the best decision she ever made was not to name me Bubba. <laughs> so as this award is evidence of, her career is to something to be envious of. And if I have a fraction of it in my life, I'll be very happy and proud. While she had this great career, she always made time to make sure that she was a great mother, and she always has been, and she's always been a great inspiration. It's my pleasure to introduce my mom, Rita Williams. That's what I'm worried about. I hope you didn't count that ovation in my time limit. <laughs> I am so touched. I think you can see why I am such a proud mom. Brad just graduated from UC Hastings Law School and already has a job to start paying back that $150,000 in student loans. And he's going to work for a district attorney's office in the Bay Area, I won't tell you which one, 
and he told me to tell you he will not be your news source. <laughs> I'm also proud of my husband of 38 years here, Lindsay, who has kept me grounded <laughs> and laughing for all these years. And for all my friends here, some from nonprofits whose boards I sit on, you can read which ones they are in your program. I feel so blessed here tonight. My advice to all of you is do not shortchange your family and friends. When your job is gone, they're here for you. I have to admit, though, that I'm still a stickler for accuracy, and if you'll look in your program after this is over, there was a mistake. It said I was the first on-air woman at KTVU, and that is not true. I was the first woman with an office in the press room of the San Francisco Hall of Justice. So, for accuracy's sake, I had to say that one. But being one of the first female reporters in this business has been tough at times, with sex and pay discrimination not always being taken seriously. But there were also some things that, now that we're on this side, we can laugh about, such as the first time I went into the 49ers locker room full of only men. When I asked a star player a tough question, he started answering. Then midway through, he took off his towel and flipped it in my face. Well, I just kept staring at his face, showed no reaction. Then I asked a tougher follow-up question. He answered. Then I stared down at his anatomy and I said, you know, if I didn't have any more than that, I don't think I'd be showing it off. <laughs> Who knows where that gutsiness came from? Probably from Texas. There was what seemed like an eternity of silence. Then he started laughing, said that was pretty good. That broke the ice. All the men in the room started laughing and I was never tested in the locker room again. Before the music begins, and I really do get the hook, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. I was truly shocked and humbled by this award and when I read the outstanding recipients who have preceded me. I could start naming names of people I owe appreciation to and those people before me, but we would be here all night. So let me just say, in 42 years, I worked at only four TV stations, which may seem pretty amazing these days. Most of that time, of course, was at KTVU, Channel 2, a great place to work. My news directors, people I worked with, and those in the field that I competed with made me better. Being an early woman in TV news, I worked longer and harder just to show that women could indeed do the job, the job that many of you now have. But now that I've had time to reflect since retiring, I've realized that that work ethic continued long past trying to prove that women could do the job. I treated each story as if it were the most important one I had ever done. Because remember this, to the person whose story you're telling, it is. I gave my all every single day for what's been estimated to be about 10,000 stories. So now I pass the mic to outstanding reporters like Sarah Seidner and to so many of you out there that I respect and admire and now listen to and watch, both women and men. We showed that news director who told me way back in 1972 that I would have to find another career because viewers would never allow women to age on the air.
Well, when I retired, I was a week shy of 67 years old. I guess we have come a long way, baby. Thank you so very much. She's known as the Yellow Rose of Texas. I'm not dead. I'm still around. Thank you.